9% of South Dakota's population identifies as American Indian or Alaskan Native. However, less than 1% of South Dakota State University's student body represents this demographic. The Wakini Initiative offers programming and support to enrolled members of the nine tribal nations in South Dakota. As part of this initiative, a new American Indian Student Center is to be built. April Eastman is the director of the American Indian Student Center. She is here today to talk about the center and the services it provides. Thank you, April. So, April, the American Indian Student Center, currently it's in the Enrollment Services Center here on campus. Who does the center serve? We serve all self-identified American Indian students. So whether they are on our main campus or they are distant um, online students, we get their names um, at the beginning of each semester and we reach out to those students. Our office is also open to non-native students. We've had um, non-native partners, um, students that are involved in our native student organizations that are non-native. Um, we have a living learning community and our CAs are not, have been non-native, so they're involved. Um, in the work that we do. So our doors are open to anybody, but the services are really sort of tailored to the to the self-identified Native students. And what kind of services do you provide to the students who use it? So our staff, um, we have a retention advisor slash program coordinator. So um, the retention advising is really anything non-academic related as far as getting them registered for their courses. So we do a lot of work with financial literacy, financial aid, um, any kind of paperwork, if students are selected for verification, um, specific to those types of services. But then we really advocate for our students in any way that they, they may need our services. And so it really involves getting those students into our office to meet them and to understand what their needs are. So we have sort of parameters, but then we just tailor based on what it is that they're needing from our office. Tell me a little bit about that transition for your students who use those services, because it looks a little bit different than some other organizations on campus. The center is really responsible for that student interaction mm -hmm. um, and that student engagement piece. And so um, new this year to our services is a native recruiter. And so we really hope to see um, an increase in our numbers as far as the recruitment, but also the retention, because um, I think something that's more unique to our student population is that uh, the relationship building is so critical. And so the earlier we can engage with our students, um, I think the higher the chances of them, you know, matriculating into SDSU, but also being able to retain them. We have an early orientation program for our first year and transfer students. And so we bring them in a week before classes start. And I think one thing we're going to do this year is hopefully expand that by a day. This last spring, we launched a SDSU to U program. So our new recruiter went out with a small team, um, some financial aid members, our retention advisor. We had the minority recruiter who's really been helping our recruiter transition into her new role. We had academic advisors. And so this small team of individuals went out to four to five select high schools that we'd really built relationships with and were able to actually get them registered and took the new student orientation to them. And so then those students registered for our orientation program. And then they come on to campus a week before classes and they get moved in and we introduce them to their advisors and we bring different people in to talk about services and just overall educating them about services that are available to them and, and really showing them who our partners are so that they understand our job is to connect them with the services that you know they may need beyond our office or in more detail I think too. And why do you think those services that you provide to these students are so important? A lot of times it's just really intimidating, I think, for our students. They, a lot of times, are experiencing culture shock. Also, even if they're coming from a public school, public schools tend to have a Native representative working with those students or a tribal community liaison. And so when they get here, you know, they need to find that point of contact, you know, to really just be able to help them articulate questions that maybe they don't even know they need to ask. And so that is really our responsibility is to be that point of contact and to let them know we're here to help you with whatever it is that you need, even if you don't really understand at the time what that need might be. I think one thing that our students really take comfort in is that when they come in, we have shared experiences. You know, we more often than not look like the students. We come from similar backgrounds. Although we do have to spend that time to build relationships with our students because we have common experiences and shared stories, a lot of times we're able to sort of navigate that at a quicker pace. And so we're not asking them to, you know, reshare a lot of who they are and where they're coming from. We sort of draw on our own experiences. And so we just take comfort, I think, in, in 
being able to offer that and for our students to be on the receiving end of that, you know, they will share that when they come in. I don't have to explain, you know, when I go in and um, maybe they need to go home for a funeral and our funerals um, last longer um, and they're more an extended period of time that they may need to be gone from campus. And so when you're experiencing something as traumatic as a death in the family or in your community, when you go in to say, I need to go home, you know, you, you're not going to want to explain why you need to be gone for so many days and things like that. So that's, you know, a more typical experience for our students, but that applies to whatever it is that they're sharing with us. Backpedaling a little bit, when you talk about having those shared experiences with those students, what is that like for you as a director to know that the place that you work for, that they can come to and feel comfortable and like be themselves and that you can truly share that experience with them? Well, it's very personal because, you know, I needed that as a student. Um, that was my lived experience. And as a mother, I want that for my children when they go to college. And so really the way we approach our work is as relatives. And so when students come in, you know, we're always trying to find that connection, that common thread, that common person. You know, we know someone they know or they may be related to somebody we're related to. And it really is a small community in, in what we call Indian country. And so if we can make a connection, you know, that sort of ups the ante as far as our responsibility to that person. Because once they share their story with you and you create that common bond, you do want to do right by the student. So it becomes very personal. That's great knowing that your center is able to provide these things for those students. Moving forward, your center for recent years has kind of been on the outer edges of campus. And now here you're about to break ground here on a new facility that's located more towards the center of campus. Can you tell me a little bit about that and what you think like being more centralized will do for students? First of all, it's very exciting to have a new space will be a permanent location because we've been in transition for the past couple of years. And typically our students will say they enjoy being at the center. However, they don't enjoy the long walk over. And so because we're out on the periphery of campus, you know how winters are here um, or if it's rainy or just cold, which more often than not it is. So we've had to tailor our services to go into our living learning community and host our events in more centrally located places on campus. And so we know that being closer to the heart of campus is really going to help increase our visibility, but also both for Native and non-Native students to utilize the space. It's going to be a beautiful building. We're really excited. Our location now, if you've ever been in there, I would definitely invite you over to tour the space. It's small, but it's very welcoming and it, it just feels good in the space. We're excited for others to be able to experience that when we are in our new location. And we're really looking forward to the groundbreaking and for the center to be done. So right now you're located inside the Enrollment Services Center. Yes, in the lower level. And now once this facility is finished, you'll be south of the rotunda? Yep, we'll be on the Rotunda Green, yes. Okay. Uh, tell me a little bit about what that facility will look like. You say it will be beautiful. Like, what can people expect for there to be inside? The outside, I think, is is really interesting. The way the architects and the designers were able to tell the story that reflects the South Dakota landscape. It was a, a very unique process, I think, to make it fit the look of the campus, but also incorporate Native design and story. Um, but inside... Um, you know, it's it's going to be more of the decor, I think, that is reflective of our tribal communities. You know, we'll have our tribal flags, the South Dakota flags. We'll have some space for as we acquire non-South Dakota tribal flags. The artwork is reflective, you know, similar to our space now. We really, anywhere else you go on the campus, you see, you know, it's Jackrabbit, it's SDSU, you know, the branding. In our space, we really like it to be reflective of who we are because that is something that I think is regardless of where students come from or what their experience has been like before they get to SDSU, when they come in and they see reflections of themselves and their families in artwork or just the decor in general. That's really neat, making sure that it's a space, you know, that is representative of the people mm -hmm. that will use it and, mm -hmm. you know, a space to chill out, be comfortable. I'm yeah. sure you have a lot of students that do things like that now. Yes, we do. Um, but we also, have, like I said, non-Native students who come into our space. And when we have programs and we invite campus community members in, you know, we also try to 
find that balance between being reflective of who we are, not only historically, but contemporarily, as well as having information to explain. You know, when you walk into our current space now, we have some artwork, so to speak, and it's showing the tribal flags and it has a little description of each you know so opportunities like that where we're able to educate people as well you know had people come in and and make the comment that they didn't realize that tribes had flags so any opportunity that we can do to incorporate that into the design of the building is something that we've taken into consideration as well and what do you feel that this new center will do for sdsu and its campus You know, it is a a recruitment tool and a retention tool, you know, for students to feel like they have a space where they can just be who they are, come in and and sort of get that reprieve from the stress of being a college student. You know, a lot of times they'll come in and it's used as a gathering space um, in between classes. And we have a small kitchenette area so students are able to make a meal when they meet for their student organization uh, meetings and things like that. And so um, not every campus has a Native Center. And so that is something that, you know, we talk about with our prospective Native students is this space will be here for many years to come. Um, And it took many years for it to come into existence. And so uh, just telling that story and making sure students understand that SDSU is putting forth the effort to make sure that our students feel like they belong here. The American Indian Student Center will break ground here on campus on October 9th. Really excited to see that. Thank you so much for being here today, April, Mm -hmm. to talk to me about the new American Indian Center. This is Between Classes. Thanks for listening.